Welcome back, Legendary Potato here, and today I'm going to be doing an in-depth GRF explanation for Universal Minecraft Editor. And so this is version 1.2.2, uh, which is the first release of the GRF Editor. So what I'm going to be doing is explaining how you can use it in your worlds and exactly how everything works, because it's a little bit confusing. So if you're somebody who doesn't know anything about GRF editing, or somebody who's at least had some experience, I'm going to be showing you guys how you can apply it to Universal Minecraft Editor to use it in your own maps. So hope you guys will enjoy this video. If you do, make sure you leave a like on it. But anyways, let's get started with it. So we're going to come over to the diamond tool, and then we're going to go down to GRF Editor. So this is the new tool right here. So as you can see, there's um, pretty much the player defaults, item messages, and advanced. So this world here, I played around with some of the GRF stuff, uh, but what it's going to look like on your screen is it's probably going to have all of these things kind of removed here. Uh, and it's just going to have a blank inventory and a bunch of other things as well. And so it'll probably look something like this. And so you can go ahead and enable player defaults, and then it lets you pick a spawn point. So in this case like this will be 0, 100, and 0. Uh, and then you can go ahead and modify things like the rotation of the player. So if you want a player to face a certain way when they spawn in the world, let's say you want them to face somewhere around you know uh, southwest here. So you want them to face kind of southwest there uh, about 46 degrees and then if you want them to face up or down a certain way, let's say you want them to look up at something, uh, then you can go ahead and do that. So they see something right as they spawn in, uh, which is something you can do. You can go ahead here, modify the health and food, so when they spawn in the world, they will spawn in with this. So if you want them to have full health, you don't really need to modify this. But if you want them to spawn with something like this, let's say you want them to have half a heart and half a hunger, then you can do something like that, or half health, or whatever you want them to do. Uh, then you can go ahead and have this kind of slide and so the reason that they are you know on the same slider is because of the fact that there's kind of this bug in the game uh, where they're pretty much uh, on the same kind of thing or they kind of swap so the health will switch for the hunger and then the hunger switches with the health uh, so just to prevent that it's just kind of kept to be the same way which is just a little bit weird but uh, just to keep that in mind is that you know you got to keep on the same slider you can't do anything about that and then you have the inventory one which is the coolest one so if you want somebody to spawn in with something cool let's say you want somebody to spawn in with a spawner on their head like how i had on my player and then i can go ahead and do that add a spawner and then they spawn in with the spawner on their head so every player in the game will spawn with that on their head and then if you want to go ahead and give them something as well let's say that'll be the, the map spot of course but let's say you want to go ahead and give them something um like a gold block let's say you want to give a player a gold block when they spawn in the world then you can go ahead and do that. You can change the item if you want to, or even change the count. So let's say we want to give them uh, 30 gold blocks for whatever reason. Maybe it's a currency or something you want them to start off with. So you can use this to kind of make quick hits and stuff like that, which is pretty nice. So just kind of have a simple thing in your inventory spawned in right there. So then next we'll move on to the item messages, which this part is very cool. So we have here as we have messages, new message, and then some other things that are grayed out. So let's create a new message here. So it gives us this one message thing, or message one, and it gives us a message preview and stuff like that. Also lets us change language, stuff like that. So this pretty much is going to be exactly how your thing spawns in in the game, or how it looks in the game pretty much. Uh, so if we wanted to you know, customize the text, let's say, hey guys, welcome to my world, then you can go ahead and do that. And so that'll be how it appears in the game and then if you want to you know type more things you can just kind of go ahead and do that of course uh, but I think I'm happy with this you know what maybe I'll do subscribe to my channel and then you know that will work as well so that way when people you know activate this message they'll see this and so there you go kind of cool right uh, so pretty much what we can do if you want to put this message on an item what we can go ahead and do is add a item so let's say we want to add, uh, we'll do on stone. So we'll look up stone here and we'll throw that right on. So here it is. So now we have a message that's going to be on stone. So now it gets a little bit confusing. Uh, so we have this thing called the whitelist mode and also has times one. And so basically what this is, is that allows us to modify the count here, which is the times one, of course. And then also gives us the switch mode, uh, which is kind of a little bit more, you know, confusing. Uh, but basically there's a whitelist mode and there's also a blacklist mode. So as you can see, you can switch back and forth and it lets us choose between those. And so let me explain what those are. So let's go ahead and start off with a blacklist mode. So I'm going to start off with this one. And then so this is our message and we'll just call it uh, custom text. We'll call it custom text. Uh, but, you know, obviously you can name yours to whatever you want, but we'll just do it in that case. So I'm going to X out of here. And then I'm going to go to my player. So this will be an example of a way, uh, but you can do this in pretty much any way you want. 
Uh, but any item in any chest or anything like that, player inventories, whatever you want to do. Uh, so let's say we have a piece of stone in our inventory. Uh, we'll get two pieces of stone for this case. And so as you can see, it gives us GRF custom text. So as you can see, it lets us modify the GRF message right there. And so pretty much what blacklist mode does is it automatically makes every stone pretty much have this custom GRF. And so if you want to turn this on or off, we can go ahead and hit this. And so now what that does is that this piece of stone doesn't have any GRF but this piece of stone does. So this has the custom text that we just created. So whenever somebody picks up this custom text or somebody picks up this stone, then it displays the custom text. And so that then, as you can see there, so if you want to disable that, you can do it there. But we have it not on this stone and on this one. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just enable that back. So blacklist mode pretty much makes every stone into automatically having this by default. And so if we go and now go back into the GRF editor, go to item messages and we set this to blacklist mode you can probably guess what this will do uh, so let's go ahead and switch mode and now it's in whitelist mode and now as you can see by default none of them have it and so if you want to add a GRF message we can just go here go to the GRF message tab and then as you can see quickly implemented so now it has the GRF message and it has all that sort of stuff which is pretty cool so as you can see there just has the custom GRF message really cool and easy and so you can pretty much modify this however you want so if you want an item to just display a message um, then you can go ahead and modify which ones do what and so you can obviously get a lot more advanced with these so if you want more messages and stuff like that then you can obviously add more messages so you can say more text or something I don't know I'm just kind of making up words here so more text and then says like yes let's just say it says yes so there it is there <laughs> and so let's say we want this one to be from we'll do a piece of wood uh, so we'll do oak wood plank and so oop, wait a minute I closed out of it there oak wood plank and so then we can do that so let's say we want every oak wood plank uh, to do this so let's go ahead and switch mode so now every single time you pick up this item it'll just say yes so I don't know why you would need to do that but it's all customizable here and so you can also change the language uh, which, as you can see here, you can't seem to do that right now, but it'll be supported eventually, I think. Uh, but basically what it ends up doing is it only does the text for that language. So if you wanted to translate for each thing, you'd have to do it by hand. Um, and it doesn't like automatically do it over or anything. So that's just something to keep in mind. Like, let's say you're German or something and you want your thing to be in German, then you can do that. You can just kind of have a thing that switches uh, and you can kind of do that. Uh, just kind of like it depends on the language that's on your Xbox console and so that, that kind of makes and you know decides that and So now we have the advanced tab and so this tab pretty much allows us to do things uh, You know at the advanced stuff and it kind of shows the details so as the rules and it has the details section And so from what I've heard this is the first program to properly display GRF and, and by that I mean that like it shows the rules and the details sections so let's say we have this and so we go to update player which is pretty much the player default section and so it just shows us everything here and kind of gives us you know details of exactly what's going on so like things like the food uh, what dimension things like that uh, rotations so everything's all modified here so if you wanted to just modify them here instead you can do that all here but it's basically the same as modifying them from that and then as well as that we also have the custom text that we made so we have custom text here and then we also have the more text and so as you can see those all show up so it kind of shows everything that's going on there shows like collected item and some information about that as well so if you're more you know GRF like advanced and stuff like that if you know the format all that sort of stuff and this stuff will probably make a lot more sense to you uh, but if you just want to keep it simple I'd recommend you just stick to this and this for now but if you know some of this then you can probably do that um, which is at least pretty cool of course uh, so I guess kind of something cool as well is if you want to import GRF let's say somebody has a GRF file then you can go ahead over to import GRF and then you can locate the GRF file on your computer so I've just opened up the GRF of the tutorial world and so pretty much what we see here is the standard stuff that we are kind of used to seeing. Uh, so it has things like the spawn point, the rotation is not really modified. But then we got the health and food and the inventory. So as you know, if you've ever loaded up the tutorial world, you spawn it with one piece of steak in your inventory. And you also spawn it with six health, six hunger. And so you would eat the piece of steak and it would heal you back up to kind of teach you. So food heals you up or it heals up your hunger, which heals up your, you know, uh, health like that and so pretty much it shows you that these are the ways that they're done uh, so as you can see just pretty much how that's all set up and we go to the item messages now this is where it gets really cool 
So we have things like the IDs, collected, music discs. And so this is pretty much uh, the messages that are displayed when you collect these music discs. And so it has one message here, which says, you have found progress of goals music disc. So it pretty much has these variables, uh, which are substituted by how many of these you've found. And so as you can see here, it just kind of has these music discs, which are also in whitelist mode. Um, so pretty much it just means that only one music disc will do this. Uh, so it's just the first one that you find. So it, the game just assumes that the first one you find happens to be uh, the one in the world. And so as you can see, pretty much all of these here are going to display the message, uh, which is really neat as well. So it's just pretty much this. The message items just come from the music disc. Uh, and so that's pretty much how that works. And then we go into the advanced tab. And so we have things like um, the update players, which is everything from player defaults. And then we also have complete all, which are the items and stuff like that. And so pretty much all the custom text. And then we got these cool named areas. And so pretty much what these do is they create two coordinates and create a box, kind of like this 3D rectangular, not really rectangular, but kind of this prism. And so pretty much what it does is it creates this kind of area. So if you walk into this area, then it's going to, you know, pop up this sort of thing. So this is the one that you spawn in. So it kind of gives you the, you know, stuff when you spawn in. It kind of tells you things about the tutorial. And then when you leave, you can go to things like the minecart area. So then it will give you the coordinates of when you walk into this area. It will give you the text for that. Or same with the boat area, the fishing area, piston area, etc. You get the idea. There's so many areas in the tutorial world of course there's tons of boxes and things to explain things and so I assume is that you can probably use these um, yeah, at least theoretic uh, theoretically you could probably use these in your own world and just by having X you know zero uh, Y zero Z zero X one Y one and Z one and so you can create these areas and maybe even have your own custom text but uh, of course, like you can play around some of the things as well and kind of see exactly what happens. And so you can pretty much open GRF of a lot of things as well. You can open uh, the GRF of like the battle maps and the glide maps or uh, the tutorial worlds or other people's maps where they've put GRF in and stuff like that. So you can kind of see exactly how it all works and kind of learn from it as well. But this is just kind of an in-depth explanation as to pretty much how everything works. So player defaults, item messages, and the advanced tab, which if you're a beginner, then you're probably not going to understand this too much yet. Uh, but this is also some other cool things you can modify as well, um, such as things like spawn, flat world, has been a creative cloud height. So if you want to make the clouds at like the layer 10, for example, uh, which I think somebody did this in one of their worlds, and it was kind of like this cool fog mod. But you can go ahead and do that. So, of course, you probably don't want your clouds that low because then they're all annoying and stuff like that. Um, but you could probably do that if you wanted to set the daytime and everything like that. So there's also things you can modify there. And so just overall, the GRF editor is a really cool thing to just kind of experiment and play around with. And there's probably so many things we could discover in the community and find out what we could do with this sort of program. So, uh, of course, if this leads you guys to be inspired to try some things, because it might be possible uh, to get some of these cool things like from the mini games or um, just from the tutorial world to be able to make them into your own worlds. It might be something you might be able to do, of course. Uh, but hopefully this explained how to use the program in a way that made sense. If you have any questions, make sure you leave, um, leave them down in the comments section below, and I'll try to answer them as best as I can. But this is pretty much how the GRF editor works, and hopefully this cleared up any sort of confusion, so you can go ahead and start GRF editing right now. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video. If this video was helpful, please make sure you do leave a like and let me know down in the comments section. I'd love to hear that, of course. And I'll see you guys in the next video. So have a good one, guys, and I'll see you guys in the next one.